Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations to each of you. Um, Ms. Hill, what is collateral estoppel? Collateral estoppel. Um, <laughs> I think collateral estoppel. Um, well, Senator, I will say that my practice, my 20 years of practice has primarily been dealing with issues relating to um, criminal law or relating to other areas of the law. Yes, and if you don't know, just tell me. I, I, I certainly do know collateral estoppel. I'm okay. finding that the bright lights of the what, moment are um, what, making it hard is, for me to recall it. Okay, so you don't recall it, okay. Um, what is the amount in controversy requirement? The amount in controversy requirement is $75,000. It typically governs, um, in many cases, almost any case in diversity jurisdiction in the federal courts. Okay. Uh, and in a certain other. Uh, what's, what does the uh, 13th Amendment to the Constitution do? It outlaws slavery. What does the uh, 7th Amendment do? It ensures that all um, civil jury trials, that all civil cases in the United States are are done by jury trial, that you have a right to a jury trial in a civil case. Okay. What is the difference between a stay order and an injunction? A stay, a stay order would prohibit, um, sorry, an, an injunction would re restrain the parties from taking action. A stay order, I'm not sure that I actually can, uh, can give you the, okay. that. Okay. Tell me about, you'll see a lot of this in federal court. Tell me about the multi-district litigation statute. So I'm not extremely familiar with the multi-district litigation. I do know that multi-district litigation is often consolidated into um, a particular court. So all of the cases involving a particular type of um, issue, if there is a multi-district litigation, those will all be referred to one court and one judge who will then oversee the MDL. But I will confess I'm not uh, super familiar with all the ins and outs of that. Okay. What, what kind of constitutional claims are subject to uh, intermediate judicial scrutiny? Cases involving certain types of classes, such as gender or illegitimacy, are subject to intermediate scrutiny. Some types of speech, like commercial speech, would be subject to intermediate scrutiny. Okay. Tell me what a, a 12B6 motion is. It's a motion to dismiss a claim, or I mean a motion to dismiss an issue for failure to state a claim. Okay. And what's the standard for granting a summary judgment in federal court? It says that there are no issues of material fact, and that the issue can therefore be decided as a matter of law. Okay. Um, What's the standard for deciding whether a particular punishment is cruel and unusual under the Eighth Amendment? So the particular standard the court has said, and I cannot recall the case, but it says that you have to look at um, not only whether it is uh, would be shocking to an to the individuals at the time that it was written. So it's not purely a historical review, as some of the some of them are purely historical, but also you have to look at how it has changed, how those values have changed with time. It's one of, the, one of those cases, circumstances where the court says it's appropriate to look at how values have changed with okay. time. Well, uh, our right against cruel and unusual punishment is a fundamental right, is it not? It is. Okay. How do you square what you just told me about the Eighth Amendment uh, with with the case after case after case by by the U.S. Supreme Court that says a um, the definition of a fundamental right is one that's explicitly stated in the Constitution or deeply rooted in our history and tradition. Yeah, I, th I think that it is. I think it is deeply rooted in our history and tradition. The yeah, but certain forms of of uh, punishment are not. If a, if a form of punishment it existed uh, at the time of our founding and it's deeply rooted in our history and tradition, you're telling me that makes it automatically constitutional today? I thought you just told No, me. I'm certainly not saying that. The Supreme, I'm not. What I say is about it is really quite irrelevant, but the Supreme Court has said we look at it with 
with a view to the changing values yeah, on these why issues. The difference? I thought, well, I, both I, fundamental rights, why the difference? Yeah, you know, I think that's a question that the Supreme Court's going to have to answer, whether or not they, they well, have. I think it has. I'm just asking if you know. I, I think I've answered the question to the, the best of my ability, Senator. Okay. Thank you all. Senator Hawley, can you to return? No. Uh, I, I think that all the senators uh, have appeared who are going to question today. Uh, Ms. Hill, I congratulate you on surviving the John Kennedy six-minute bar exam. My contracts teacher is going to be appalled, and uh, I'm going to have to live with that, Senator, but thank you, Chair. Thank you. <laughs> if you promise to spare Ms. Hill, I'll... <laughs> um, did, did the White House give any of you any written materials to use to prepare? They gave... Today? Our digital materials. They they gave us um, you know questions, previous questions that had been asked by the and panel a, and answers. Um, I think we had to go find the answers ourselves. I think we had to go watch okay. the various committees. May I have a copy of that? Um, I don't have one, but I am sure that it's just it is literally just a, a list of questions. I don't have a copy. I don't have. I don't have any. Would you send me a copy? I'm easy to find. <laughs> Would you send me a copy, Michelle? I will. Okay. Would you each send me a copy? Yeah. So yes, I Senator. Can compare and make sure they're all the same. Okay. Thank you. Senator, can we have a copy of your list of questions uh, to share with the sure. other members? I'll even give you the answer. It's like a bar. <laughs> it's like a bar review course. Yes. Senator Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to all of you for being here.